We also have all the materials available to start building our raised garden beds. This will be our first ever attempt at a garden. So you'll definitely want to stick around and see how that goes. So about that. everyone, welcome or welcome back to our channel. If you're new here, my name is Jessalyn and today we are gonna talk about what in the world happened with our garden beds. So about a year ago, we had planned to post a video that was all about our elevated garden beds. I had like 80% of a video edited and ready for upload and then obviously, that just never ended up happening. Now this was not like a massive fail. I wouldn't say it was the worst first attempt ever. However, there are some things that we would do differently and today we're gonna share exactly what those things are. So if you'd like to see exactly how we constructed our elevated garden beds or what we were able to successfully grow last year and what we plan to do differently this year, then be sure to stick around. And as always, if you find yourself enjoying this video or gaining any value from it, please be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you'd like to keep up with our homesteading journey. So I'm gonna give you guys a step-by-step -step on how I built these raised beds. So these are some of the materials that I used, like your recycled plastic landscape timber. That's the most important thing you're gonna to wanna to use for the base. I would not use a wood because the plastic is not gonna suck up any moisture and that's what's gonna to be touching the earth and the, the wet the most and you don't ever want it to rot out. So this guarantees that this thing will never rot out in 100 years. And plus it holds screws well. So here we're just meeting the corners up uh, flushing the sides with the inside piece. That way I'm not wasting lumber. I like the, my longer cuts to be on the outside and my in-betweens to be in between. I'm just shooting them up here. I'm using three and a half inch galvanized ring shank nails or 16 penny. And I like to shoot everything up first with a nail gun and then come back and screw it all off with stainless steel screws. Just taking some, some measurements here, cutting all my uprights for the corners. And I'll show you how those match up here in a, in a little bit. I'll tell you what, that guy knows what he's doing, doesn't he? Every movement's smooth. Pencil. Blade. Catch the board, toss it, smooth. So I'm just measuring out my center point. This thing's gonna have long walls on it, so you don't want the middle to blow out when you put your dirt on it. So this is a center brace to hold that middle diaphragm from blowing out that bottom once that weight's put down on top of it because it's going to want to put pressure on the sidewalls. So the way I'm shooting these up is you just overlap the one and a half inch to the corner flush, shoot it up, and then stand it up on end. And what I like to do is I like to, the long side is usually what you're going to be looking at, and I like to take the three and a half inch side of the two by four and run it face with the long side and then my short side will be in between. Where I just shot right there. That is the short side. That side here is the long side, the flat, the big flat side. So got my corners in got them shot down and the weight of everything is going to hold all those down. Those cleats are just basically like pins to hold that in place. You don't have to worry about lift on this. There's no wind or any kind of lift with that. These beds are going to probably weigh, you know, two, three thousand pounds each once they're done. I'm just shooting my middle pieces in. That just gives it more rigidity. And I think right here we're going to be building the top box. 
built the same as the bottom box, just a mirrored image of it, but we're using treated lumber above grade because it's cheaper. Those 16 foot recycled plastic two by fours are like $20 a piece for these at the time. Well, shoot, you probably got to mortgage your house for this now, the wood, the way wood prices are, but I think I got those two by fours. They were 10 footers for like six bucks. So now they're like 20. So you might even be better off just using plastic. Just shoot your top box down onto the corner frames in those middle uprights. Pretty self-explanatory here. I mean, this is about as easy as it gets in, in carpentry. If you guys have any questions, just go ahead and put them down in the comments down below and I'll be able to get back to you if there's any, you know, upgrades from this or, you know, if you have any questions about rigidity or design on this, you know, that's, I could walk you through even a better design than this. This is just like cost effective and rigid. This is, these will probably last 20, 25 years the way I got them built. But if you want them to last for like a hundred years forever, I can show you guys how to do that. So this is like a 12 gauge flooring panel. What it is, I got it off a buddy, a commercial job that he was on. They use this for the flooring in multi-tiered commercial buildings and they pour concrete over it. So this stuff is super strong. It's got a real high galvanized coating so to keep in the weather. What I did there is I, I pulled a measurement over to notch out for that bottom diaphragm brace. You just gotta motivate it a little bit. Sometimes you don't cut it right and you just gotta tap it in. Don't worry about it, Chubbs, just tap it in. Just running my screws. Uh, the screws that I use for that is a barn siding screw, so like your metal neoprene washered screw. Make sure it's coated. I like stainless steel so they don't rust out on you. So just screw them off on the inside. I do like every eight inches or more. The more screws, the better hold. Just use stainless steel screws on your outside corners. And those miter cuts, suck them in tight and then screw it right down and do that before you load it with dirt. This is where I've got mulch down. It's the mulch is all the way up to the top. And then I went and got some topsoil from where we dug out our house. They put a pile off for me to the side and we're just filling that with topsoil. It's like a clay topsoil mix. We're just gonna pack that down and then we topped it off with about five inches of topsoil just to give a good seed bed and, and allow it to germinate properly. You ready? Yeah. Show you how to bowl. show you how to pick some beans. Uh huh. What you do is you grab right here at the end. Where? Right here at the end, and you pinch the end, and you put the bean in there. There's a good patch of beans here. Now we got a little here, bit of beans. There's some beans for you. Put those beans away. Look how big this one is. Mhm. Mm uh, Nathan, snap the ends off a bean like this and try it. Do you do this, Daddy? Do you do this? It's good. It's good. Mhm. Mm a bite. Mmm. Nice. <laughs> nice. Very good. And the front is well. <laughs> Very good. And that's the first round of beans. Mm. That looks good for now. Let the rest grow. Let them recover. For now. And we'll get more beans. Mm. Those are all carrots, and then these are onions, and basil, cilantro, those two are cilantro over there, and that's sage. Tomato, 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 and then spearmint, strawberries, there's a, another tomato over there, and then those are all just assorted bell peppers and hot peppers and all different types of spicy and mild peppers. These aren't really coming up yet. They will. Just right now, they're taking a while to get started, get rooted. They're getting there. So last year, uh, we started these beds out. 
you know, we put the mulch in first and then we put the topsoil from where our home was excavated. We got that out and put that on top of the mulch. And then we put topsoil over top, which did fine. Everything went well. And we got in about mid-June, so we're really late. So we didn't have the, the yield we wanted to or the time before it got cold out. So wish we would have got in earlier, but you know, with everything else going on that we're doing around here, this was kind of like put on the back burner. So this year what we did was these beds got last year, these were the leftover two that we didn't plant because they weren't ready. So we put the mulch in, we put the dirt in, but then we let it wait a season and here it settled naturally to where that settled while it was planted. So now that one's down 18 inches and it has plants in it. So we didn't wanna dig everything up and replant it up higher. So we let that go, we kind of topped it off with topsoil. But this, I went ahead and I topped it, this off, the settled dirt with cow manure, about 12 inches thick. And that was like two year old manure, so it'd be good for growing for natural fertilizer. And I topped that off with the topsoil from the house. And then I topped that off with about five inches of bagged topsoil. So it'll have a good bed to germinate the seed. And if you notice, there's a lot of little wood pieces in here, which will hold the moisture and allow the seed time to germinate. Last year, like I said, we did 90% seed. This year we did 50% seed, 50% plants. The seeds that we used are fast growing seeds like beans and zucchinis and, and things of that nature. And then your tomatoes and peppers, which is more slow growing starting out, we got those in pre-grown plants. So we should have a better yield this year. So that's what we're hoping. All right, so that about wraps this up. I uh, hope you guys learned something and continue to grow and, and get away from this crazy world and just be more self-sufficient. So thank you for watching.